Hey guys, good morning. Uh, let me go and set up this room real quick and then we can get started. 623 right now, so we got about seven minutes till market open. So let me just get everything all set up then we can get started with our session for today. Uh, let's see, all right, we got this, this, good. Today is uh, Thursday, December, uh, Thursday, January 6th. So we'll be having a mentoring session today. Um, I'll set up here. It's good. All right, cool. Let me get this link sent out to you guys here in the premium. There we go. All right. Hey guys, morning. Um, I'm gonna finish setting this up real quick and then we can get started. Um, you know, sorry for the late start. I sorry for the late start, guys. I just got like yeah, I got like a million messages this morning. <laughs> like, I don't know what, what was up with people today, but I got so many messages this morning uh and emails that I was responding to them and I lost track of time. So at 624 right now, we got about six minutes till market open. But yeah, I got a, like so many questions uh overnight. So I was answering them. That's why I started a little. A little later than usual. I mean, not really like a minute later or so, but still, um, you know, just a little late. So let me just finish, get everything all set up, and then we'll get started. Uh, morning, Matt. Morning, uh, Mauricio. Morning, everyone. Six twenty-five right now. Market is going to open in about five minutes. So let's take a look at the news real quick. So for this morning, we have um, for Thursday, January sixth, we have ISM Services PMI at seven which is in about 30 minutes. Uh, we have factory orders at seven as well. We had unemployment claims at 5.30, which was negative. Um, we had trade balance and another trade balance for Canada. Other than that, I think that's it for today. So we just have some high impact news coming up at seven um, and natural gas storage at 7.30. But other than that, I think that's about it. So ISM services will uh, definitely affect US 30. However, the other ones here will probably indirectly affect US 30. So we'll use those uh as you know catalyst for for market movement um when we continue on with our analysis of us 30 today looking at retail sentiment it's currently 71 percent short so 71 percent of retail traders are on the short side of us 30 so we're still looking for some possible buys here looking at fundamentals over here it's currently up uh 58 points in the green for the futures data so we're, we are looking for buys this morning um and we'll see what happens when the market actually opens. So uh, morning, morning, Nick, morning, Al. Morning, uh, everyone. Looks like everyone's making their win right now. Let's see. I think we're good for the most part. Morning, Javier. Morning, everyone. Everyone's in there. So we're good. Morning, Maria. Morning, Delmas. Maria, I did see your message. I will message you after this. I just got a ton of messages this morning, so I will have to uh, get to you right after this live session. Morning, Bax. Morning, Professor. Morning, Delmas. Morning, everyone. All right, so it looks like everyone's here in the room now, so we'll get started with this shortly. Morning, Maddie. All right, 627. We got about three minutes to market open. Looking at current technicals right now, so our fundamentals and retail sentiment are currently pointing towards a buy. Our, re our technicals over here are currently pointing towards uh, on the one minute to sell. Reason for that is because prices below the pivots and the trend meter is red. Looking over at the three minute, um, this is currently uh, bearish as well. Uh, same reason prices below the pivots and the trend meter is red. Lastly, looking at the 10 minute over here, same situation. You know, prices, well, not really for the 10 minute. The 10 minute is a bit indecisive. It's currently um, right in between the pivots 
However, the trend meter is green, so it looks like it can be bullish, although it's not necessarily um, you know, the strongest indicator there to indicate that price is going to be going up or coming down. So the technicals here are indecisive. Um, looking at the fundamentals, it's bullish. Looking at retail sentiment, they're currently short, so we're looking for buys there. So overall, we're looking for buys. So we're just waiting for the technicals to swing to the upside. Um, other than that, I think Biden is speaking right now. So I don't know if this is a good time to trade, guys. I'm probably not going to take the breakout again, unfortunately. But Biden is speaking right now. So you guys know what happens when Biden speaks. The results of the election 2020 Nothing good happens, can't so be trusted. I will be waiting until he's done speaking. The truth speaking. is that no election, no election in American history has been more closely scrutinized or more carefully counted. Every legal challenge. All right, Biden, whatever. Anyways, Biden's speaking, so we're not going to be talking. We're not going to be looking to take any trades just yet. Probably going to wait until he's done speaking. Um, he started at about six, I believe. So he's been on for about 30 minutes. He'll probably be getting off soon. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you guys already know about it. <laughs> uh, creates Biden and Kamala Harris are speaking. I don't know if Kamala Harris already spoke. I mean, I don't know who's worse, Biden or Kamala Harris. I speak, but uh, when either of them speak, you know, price generally goes down. So that's probably why US 30 is dropping right now. So you can see US 30 started dropping. Um, like it started dropping heavily right here at six. So this is when he started speaking. Biden and Harris started speaking at six o'clock right at this time right here, and it started dropping heavily. So, uh, well, prior to that, it started dropping because people already knew Biden was going to speak. Like it was going up, consolidated, and it came down slowly, and it came down really hard right here when he started speaking. So um, that's probably explaining why it's dropping right now. You know, obviously, whenever Biden speaks, price generally drops. So he's still speaking right now. Um, and I'm not okay. looking to take any trades. At, um, at this moment. So price is going to open in about one second. There we go. Market is now open. We'll see what happens with the price right here, but I'm not looking to take any trades until Biden's done speaking. Uh, so you guys want to be a bit careful. I don't recommend anyone to take any trades here either. It's probably going to swing right back up, but uh, it's just going to be a matter of time. So what I'll do here, since Biden is still speaking, is... No proof. Uh, the election results are inaccurate. He's still talking about the elections. I thought he was talking about uh produced an oath to tell the truth had to be taken. The former president failed to make his case. Just think about this. The former president and supporters. All right, so I'm not going to uh, take any trades right now, guys. I'm going to wait for him to be done speaking. What I'll do right now is I'll just mark the charts. Uh, you just have to keep in mind that right now um, Biden is speaking so you can see price just continues to drop it, it, there's you know it, it's pretty clear why price is dropping right price is dropping very heavily as soon as biden started talking about trump and started talking about the elections price literally plummeted right here um so just give it some time guys don't like rush any trades i would just wait for him to be done speaking and then wait for price to uh provide you know a clear direction and then that's where you guys will enter some trades um, the problem when you guys trade during the time Biden speaks is the fact that price becomes very erratic. Um, you know, price will go back and forth, ton of volatility, and it's not good volatility either. It's kind of just all over the place. Uh, the thing that I dislike about Biden speaking right now, too, is the fact that um, a lot of this movement here is artificial, right? Like it's not necessarily dropping because... Um, there's anything really going on. It's specifically, well, because Biden's speaking, but it's not necessarily dropping because something is going on in the actual market. Because, um, let's see, everything here is, is bearish. You can see literally everything here is bearish. Um, it says NASDAQ falls for a third day as investors flee tech because of higher rates. Um, and that's probably something that Biden was also speaking of earlier as well. So, all of the indexes are actually red right now. They were they were green earlier. So initially, all the indexes were green, and then they turned red as soon as the market opened. So you guys just want to wait a bit for confirmation of uh, of direction. So market open right here. That's going to be opening price as price continues to drop. I'll let it drop a little more, and then we'll see where where it goes from there. But currently, right now, as you can see, Biden's still speaking. And those who instigated and incited, and those who called on them to do so, 
Kelvin. So if you guys have questions, um, I mean, you guys can ask questions right now. Normally, I don't answer questions during the live session, but until Biden is done speaking, um, I mean, I could answer any questions. Just make sure that they're not too, like, detailed, like something that I have to take a lot of time on. Right? And keep in mind that we do have a mentoring session today. So if you guys do have detailed questions, just save it for the mentoring session. Uh, but if you guys have anything basic that needs help, that you need help with, or anything that you need clarification on, um, you guys can drop your questions. Otherwise, I will... Um, you know, I'm going to be sitting around until Biden is done speaking. Editors, representatives, staff, they finished their work the Constitution demanded. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark up the charts here. We'll just set it up until so when he's done speaking, we'll be ready to start trading. Um, so let me see. Uh, this is 630. So we'll have this. There. And we'll have this. There. All right. So there's a high low right there for um, for US thirty currently. And there it goes. Price starts to swing back up. But I'm still not looking to take any trades right now until you know Biden's done speaking. Democracy and our because even though price is going up, he can say something regarding the economy or regarding anything that could affect US 30, and it'll just come right back down. So obviously I can see a lot of people here buying the dip because they did see the dip right here after Biden spoke and they're trying to catch it the right back up. Because we do have a bullish bias for uh where we did prior to a market open for US 30. If you guys are if you guys were paying attention earlier, we were waiting for price to swing back up. However, I'm still not looking to take anything until Biden's done speaking. You can see price is rejecting off the New York low from yesterday. Um, we'll see what goes from there. Anyways, let me go and just put up the strategies over here. So we got the three minute daily, three minute pivot. Put a line right there at 6:30. Um, over here, I'll see if there's any zones for any snipes. Looks like we got quite a bit over here. One right there. 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 Um, one right there. And one right there. All right. So all the zones are all right here for some snipes. Um, there's one snipe that was right here that happened prior to market open. Um, I wouldn't have taken it because market open right there, but I'm showing you guys that there's a snipe that was, you know, technically right there. Let me see Biden still speaking. They want to rule? Yeah, he's still speaking. So. Or they will ruin. Ruin what our country sure, fought for at Lexington and Concord, at Gettysburg and Omaha Beach, Seneca Falls, um, Selma, Alabama. What? And what we were fighting for? The Three right minute, to vote. Minute, the right to govern ourselves. Not really looking to right take any dailies right now, guys. Own destiny. Um, you know, as I mentioned, still early in the year. Right so I don't really like taking the dailies too early. Because uh, the market still hasn't really chosen its neighbor. direction. Or maybe we disagree. I guess the first quarter you consider it. Uh, scrolling up real quick. Let's see what else is over here. Then get back in the arena and try again the next time to make your case. Responsibility to see that right, America so is an right idea. Turn this off. All right, guys. So um, I'll just turn off Biden. He's still speaking. When he does, when he's done speaking, we'll start looking for trades. But I think I've set for the most part majority of things here up. Let me go and put the requirements here for the one minute as well, and then we can.
get everything going here. All right. So let me just finish getting this up. I think there's one more of the variation that's still on here as well. All right, solid. So I got all the requirements up here. I think I marked up everything. So as soon as Biden's done speaking, we can get started with our trades. However, right now I'm still waiting for him to be done speaking. Uh, we do have a bullish bias. So we're looking to take some buys here. Um, retail sentiment, 70%. It's not very strong, but it is you know, 70%. Looking at fundamentals over here, it's currently down 56, or it's 18, it's up 18 points now. So it was down 56 points, now it's up 18 points. So we're, we do have a, a bullish bias, just like we anticipated um, prior to market open. Um, and it's just a matter of time until Biden's done speaking, so we can start looking for some buys here. Uh, it's not a strong bullish bias. It's only up about 18 points. So we want it to be above 100 points before we start taking trades. However, if we see something really good, then we can probably got, uh, get into it. But currently right now, there just isn't anything for us to uh, necessarily enter, even if we wanted to. There's nothing on one minute, nothing on the three minute, uh, nothing over here on the 10 minute. Uh, and that's you know pretty much all the time frames we're looking at here. So got this all lined up here. Let me scroll up real quick and see what other questions I have. Uh, Rick said, I kill these breakouts. I just need to focus on these. <laughs> yeah, no, Rick, definitely. You can, you can definitely do well in the breakouts if you, uh, if you just take them as they are, because the thing is we keep looking at the breakouts and they do work out pretty fine. Uh, you know, one thing that I would recommend is if you, uh, do take the breakout, use a trailing stop loss so that you can pull out. Um, you know, I don't really recommend holding it to the full move, especially on, um, on days like these, you know, Biden speaking, or days when there's like heavy news in the morning. Like for example, here, this would this would have been the breakout uh, technically, the opening candle. So this opening candle right here would have been the breakout, right, Rick? And if you would have taken that there, it would have been a full TP, like literally immediately. Um, going over here, I'll just show you guys real quick on the clean chart. The reason why it would be the breakout is because, um, or let me just do it on here. I'll just turn off this indicator so that it doesn't block it. Um, and let me delete this. So the reason why this would be the breakout is because this was the opening candle. This was a strong red candle. We had a sell momentum right here. So on open right here, we had a sell momentum over here, a strong red candle with little to no wick on the bottom side. And that would classify as a, as a breakout entry for a sell. Um, well, just like Rick said, you know, the breakout does work majority of the time. Uh, it's just having the confidence in actually holding it and taking it um which you know rick doesn't really care he'll take it and then he'll let it go and it won't really bother him because he trusts it um so technically that would have been the breakout right there and yeah like rick said you know if, if the breakout's for you guys then you know go ahead and use it i don't like doing the breakout because it's just um a lot of people just don't have the, the mental focus to take the breakout right as soon as I take the breakout, we have like a million people asking me if we should hold on to the position. Of course, you should hold on to the position, but I don't want to deal with people blowing up my my messages asking the same question uh, because they can't handle the breakout. So if you guys can handle the breakout, then you know, great, you guys can take it. But it's not for everyone, so I don't recommend majority of people use it because you know a lot of people freak out over the littlest thing. <clears throat> like for example, right here for this breakout. Um, let me just show you guys again for the breakout right here you would have gone into some drawdown not a lot of drawdown but you would have gone into some drawdown right here because price did pull up a bit um you know before it would have hit tp so it would have hit tp eventually down here but you would have been in some massive drawdown not massive but you know a 300 pip drawdown right there so a lot of people would get scared and pull out for a loss and in reality if you just held on to it it came all the way back down so, um, you know, just FYI, if you guys want to take a breakout, great. Um, you know, if you have, <laughs> if you have the ability to, to just hold on to it, not really care and let it do what it needs to do, like Rick does, uh, great. But for majority of people, I, I already know firsthand, a lot of people don't have the, uh, the, the mental ability to, uh, to hold on to that and, you know, go through that stress. So it's just up to whoever wants to take it. Anyways, let me scroll up real quick. Yeah, like what Rick said. Rick said exactly what you said. I keep my stop loss middle of the previous candle. Honey Badger trading zero. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Uh, and yeah, and Patricia said breakout is an account blower. So what happens too with the breakout guys is that I don't understand why people just like their risk management goes out the window. They think because it moves so fast, they can go for like a huge lot size and they blow their account so quickly. Um, that's why it's one that I don't necessarily recommend people take unless like you can really handle it. So, um, and like what Jalan said, people don't know what they're doing should half risk the breakout. Exactly. Uh, I agree. So, um, and what Nick said, go for a half or even quarter lot size. Yeah, no, definitely. So I agree with everything you guys are saying. And that's why I don't necessarily take the breakout anymore because I've seen a lot of people just, you know, not do so well. And then only for the breakout, like they'd lose on the breakout and then they'd miss all the other trades, which, um, I mean, honestly, kind of blows my mind that, that people will do that. They'll take like the biggest risk for the biggest gamble. And then they'll, they'll not want to take the, uh, the trades that are actually like almost guaranteed to hit like the ones we've been taking. So yeah, I don't recommend majority of people to take the breakout, but if, if you guys do, you know, make sure to use proper risk. Okay. So Biden is done speaking. Great. This is awesome. Now we can look for trades, uh, looking over at retail sentiment. It's currently 70% short looking at fundamentals. It's currently uh, 45 points in the green or 22. It's bouncing back and forth. However, it is bullish. Um, looking over here at the technicals, looks like price is starting to make its way back up. So we are possibly looking for possible buys here. Um, same with the three minute. It came down when Biden spoke and now it's trying to make its way back up. So we just need a confirmation of the swing back to the upside, but we do not have that yet. So in order to get that confirmation, we need price to be above the pivots on the one minute, three minute and 10 minute. Uh, currently right now, 10 minute is making its way back up while the uh, three minute is also making its way back up. You can see it's bouncing off the New York low from yesterday. Um, but we're not looking to take any trades yet. You guys got to wait and be uh, patient for the confirmation. So I don't recommend entering any buys just yet. Um, possibly some variations, but I, I probably won't even enter those just yet. Because the thing is the bias can still change. So keep in mind, we are waiting for a, a bullish bias to confirm, but if the bullish bias doesn't confirm and the um, and the fundamentals here swing to the downside, then we'll probably be looking for a possible sell because you know bias can change at any moment. It doesn't always have to be a buy. Um, scrolling up real quick, let's see. So Professor said yesterday, consumer sentiment was 78% short while the Dow was over 200 points. Given the consumer sentiment would have been pointing towards a buy bias, but the fundamentals are pointing towards a sell bias. Would the best thing to do is stay on the sidelines? Yes, 100%, Professor. Because the thing is, you're just gambling at that point. It's giving you two different confluences, and your catalyst for that is telling you either to take a buy or a sell. So, you know, the sentiment would be highest. However, the reason for it coming down like that was the fact that, I mean, if you guys remember, so a lot of people were asking me about the trade yesterday about why. Um, I stopped taking buys, right? If you guys go back and watch the live session from yesterday, I explained that all in detail. I explained how new COVID news came out and price hasn't dropped yet, which was, it was anticipated to drop because when COVID news comes, it, it generally drops, right? So, I mean, I think the main thing with a lot of people is you guys got to listen, right? A lot of people just keep applying the strategies and don't listen to anything I say. Literally what I say is more important than what the strategies are telling me because the strategies are just giving you a guideline of how to enter these trades. However, the market's not always going to give you those type of entries. Um, so to the people who took buys yesterday, after I literally told you guys not to take any more buys after, you know, you guys will understand why you guys lost those trades because you guys weren't listening. Um, and I know you were in the live session. You know, I, there's a few people that were asking me the questions and all of you guys were in the live session because I saw you in the live session. So I knew that you guys weren't paying attention. Uh, listen to the live session. I'm telling you guys exactly what you guys should be doing, what you guys shouldn't be doing. Um, and if you guys are just trading blindly, you know, you can't expect to do well. Um, so this drop right here happened at, like I got off the live here at eight, right? Like literally right here. And we were still buying right here. And then I mentioned that, you know, you guys should probably not enter any sales because there was COVID news that came out regarding the new variant and price generally drops and COVID news comes out, which it did. As soon as we got off the live session here, I literally told people to stop trading. What happened? People, some people kept trading and kept taking buys after I said to stop taking buys. And what happened? <laughs> they lost money because it was at the all-time high and the COVID news didn't really affect the market yet. And then right here was where the big drop happened. So, you know, I, I don't like to like lecture people about listening, but 
the, the real key thing here is like a lot of people just don't listen. So, um, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, uh, Professor, definitely if that gives you that, like, because this is what happened yesterday. Sentiment was super uh, low, but the fundamentals were, were down because price was dropping. So if that becomes the case, I just sit out the market. That'd be the best case scenario. Um, other than that, let me go back to the chart over here and let me just scroll down a little bit and answer some more questions. So let me see if there's anything else over here. Uh, Rick said, thanks, Brandon, for that drop. You're the real MVP. Um, let me scroll up again real quick and see what else I'm missing. Yeah, Maddie said you could throw a whole trading day like that. Yeah, guys, because, and, and I and I went over this yesterday too. I literally told like all you guys at the end, I said, what happens with a lot of people is you guys make a lot of profit trading with me during the live sessions. And then as soon as they get off the live, you guys lose everything and blow your accounts because you guys don't listen to what I just said during the live. Um, so my main advice to a lot of people here is to just pay attention and listen. Uh, and, and, you know, stop trying to act like you, like you know everything, right? Because I feel like a lot of people will, they'll see these requirements here and they think they know everything. And then they take trades and they lose and they wonder why they lost. And you can just go back and watch the previous live session. I explained exactly why you, why you would have lost in that situation. Um, so let me just scroll down real quick. Yeah, Patrick said, not going to lie. Once I got funded, I stopped taking the breakouts. No, same here. I don't take the breakouts uh, either. Uh, Maddie just caught a variation. Uh, morning, Kenny. Morning, Professor. Uh, Randy said, I am here. <laughs> Randy, you were one of the guys, but no, funny. Um, yeah, I know a lot of you guys are looking for the variations. I just see, saw you guys. There was a variation right here for a V2. Uh, but, Dad, I did see that, Maddie, you as well. I'm not looking to take any sells yet, though. So, for uh, in order for me to take the sells, I need the fundamentals here to be very strong for a sell. You can see right here the fundamentals are still bouncing around. Uh, less than 100. If it goes below 100 or above 100, then my bias is going to be trading that direction. Uh, retail sentiment right now is still at 69%. So it looks like we can be shifting to a sell. We are currently at a buy, but we might be shifting to a sell here. If price ends up going below 100 points, then we'll start looking for some sells. However, at this you know specific point in time, I'm looking for, um, for price to either swing back up so I can take buys or waiting for that confirmation for it to drop further. So, yeah, no, thanks guys for letting me know, but I'm going to be a bit more cautious right now because we just don't have that confirmation. Uh, you know, like what I always recommend you guys do is be patient and wait for those entries. Uh, it looks like Maddie was waiting for it as well, so it's good. All right. Exactly. John said it was really over, overextended at the point and COVID news just tipped it over. No, I agree. John, definitely. Uh... Nice, Jalon. So Jalon's got five more days until he's funded. Yeah, you just got to take those penny trades, Jalon, until you get to that point. Just open and close it. You don't even have to make any profit. Just open and close it so you count those days and you should be solid. Um, but yeah, guys, so we're looking for trades here. Uh, just like I mentioned earlier, we're still looking for... Okay, so the fundamentals are dropping lower and lower. It's negative 74 points. If it goes negative 100, then our bias might change to a sell. Uh, retail sentiment is dropping here as well. So it's just going to be a matter of time, but we do have to, uh, you know, be patient and wait for these entries to actually provide, uh, you know, the, the setup that we're looking for. So just be patient, guys. Just be patient and wait. And, you know, it's just like how it's been in the past couple of days. If you guys have been on the live session for the past two, three days now since the new year, the market's been kind of all over the place and then it starts to smoothen out closer to eight. So like the past couple of days, our trades have been like at around seven 30, it's about to be seven right now. So keep in mind that we do have high impact news coming up shortly. Uh, if you guys weren't familiar with that uh, and you're just joining the room, as you can see right here at seven o'clock, we have ISM services PMI, which is high impact. Um, looks like they're forecasting it to be negative. So we'll see. Yeah, the forecasting to be negative. So if that comes out negative, price might drop even further, which is good for us because it's going to help us with our sell bias. Because right now it's still indecisive. You can see from the clean chart over here, price isn't really going anywhere, right? It's kind of just going back and forth within this area. 
So at this point, price is just ranging. It's a huge range. You can see from here, price opened here, came down, came back up, projected off here, then came back down. So it's kind of doing the opposite of what we was doing yesterday. If you guys remember yesterday, we had these highs that just kept getting established over here, and then price finally dropped below, and then it swung back up. Uh, same with this one right here. Price might be making a small climb to the upside, just kind of like it did yesterday, but on the opposite direction. So it might make a small climb up here. Come back up. Test, you know, some area over here, opening price, and then come right back down. Right? That, that might happen. So it's just a matter of waiting for this to play out because pretty much this pattern has been playing out every day this week. It's either been pushing up to the upside and creating lows or pushing to the downside and creating highs. Um, right now, obviously, it's creating lows. And if this closes right here, then we might have a pending uh, little range within that area. Which is what we're looking for. This is exactly what we're looking for. We want price to get into a tighter little consolidation area um, because when price is done consolidating, price will either break out to the upside or break out to the downside. Um, currently, right now, it looks like we're going to be looking for some possible sells at some point. Um, you know, with the retail sentiment here dropping lower and lower, you can see it is dropping. It started off at like 72%, now 70, now 69, now, now 68. So as you can see, a lot of people here on the short side are pulling out of their position, which is great. We want them to pull out of their positions so that we can trade against them. Um, or they're probably switching to a buy because they're expecting price to swing right back up. So uh, with that said, let me see if there's any other news here. I don't think there's anything else going on at the moment. Um, yeah, Macy's is closing more stores. You know, it's a lot of malls were and screwed. Bed Bath & Beyond. And Taco Bell is launching a Taco a Day subscription program. <laughs> nice. It's interesting. Um, other than that, there's not really much news here, guys. Uh, let me just refresh this real quick. Um, all of the indices are currently in the red right now. The Dow is down 105 points. So that's exactly what we we're looking for, right, guys? We we're waiting for it to drop 100 points. It's now do dropped 100 points, or a bias might be looking for a sell now. Uh, SP is down, NASDAQ's down, Russell 2K and VIX are up, but those are kind of relevant with regard to the indices that we're trading here. So looking at the Dow, the Dow is now down uh, 100 points. So we might be looking for some sells at this point. Uh, technically, right here, let's do one, two, three. No, this wouldn't be a high low entry. Move that lower. This would be a high low entry, just got invalidated. So, one thing that you guys want to be careful for is if you guys are looking for some sales, uh, we're getting really close to the Asia low right here. But it looks like our bias might be shifting to a sell, which is fine. Um, and, and these are like risky days, guys, because the bias is finally shifting, right? For the past month or two months, we've been in a bullish bias. Uh, if price starts to shift to a sell, um, then, then, you know, we're obviously going to start looking for, uh, it's going to take some time for it to confirm that it's actually turning and not just a temporary push. Uh, Maddie, I did see the variation there. Did you take it? Hit full TP already. Yeah, it was too fast. So there's a variation right there, guys. Uh, version two of the variation. Let me check real quick. Uh, it's down 111 points, so our bias might be shifting to a sell, guys. Retail seven at 68. It's not very strong. I mean, it, it is on the short side, but it is not very strong. So, um, you know, we can easily shift. The, the problem with this here, guys, is that if a lot of people bandwagon onto these sells, it's not going to be a good. It's not going to be an easy move for us because price will probably just keep bouncing around the area before it um, it confirms. So, yeah, I'm kind of tempted, Manny, to possibly take some variations for a buy if we do get some, but we got to be really quick because they're going to be really quick moves. Um, I know it's going against fundamentals here, but the thing with, with this right here is just like I said earlier, uh, price is, in, in a, is transitioning right now. So if price is transitioning to a sell, 
the thing with this here is that it's not just going to drop immediately, right? It's going to bounce back and forth. So with that bounce back and forth, we're able to catch quick little moves, right? Like we're only going for 100 pips. So if we can catch the little bounce, this is literally the move that we're looking for, a quick little move. So if we can get a variation for a quick little push to the upside, you know, we can catch it. However, I'm, I'm for the most part looking for a sell. So at this point, Maddie, I think I'm not going to be looking for any buys. I know it's tempting to enter the buys if we get some variations, but the fundamentals here are too strong for a sell. And the retail sentiment here is going smaller and smaller. So yeah, I know the range is too big. Just like Maddie said, the, the, um, this is, and this is exactly what I was saying earlier guys, where it's kind of risky because you can see the retail traders, it went from 68 to 69. Uh, some people are bandwagoning onto these cells here. And the problem with that is it's going to cause manipulation in the market because, um, so the problem with these, with these ranges, like I was saying, we're only looking for like hundred pips, but the problem is these candles are too big. These candles are like 600, 500 to 600 pips, right? So the problem is if your stop loss is too tight, you can easily get stopped out before it reaches your TP. So, uh, you know, with this increased volatility, you might be a bit risky. You got to wait for like, you really got to wait for the perfect entries. Unless you, uh, you're going for a bigger move because these candles right now are too big. And like Maddie said, the range is too big right now. Um, All right, so let me just adjust these because these are all moving. <clears throat> yeah, this thing is dumping right now. All right, so let me refresh this. <clears throat> As you guys, you guys can see right here, so price just bounced off here. Came up, uh, yeah, so price just pushed up from there, and it's bouncing off the uh, Asia low right there. Let's keep moving this lower and lower as the price continues to drop. And guys, I don't recommend anyone FOMO into these cells here. I know a lot of you guys are probably looking at it and thinking about hopping into these cells because um, you see it drop. I don't recommend anyone just like hop into these cells for no reason. If you see a cell entry, then yes, enter the cell. But I don't recommend anyone enter the cell. Oh yeah, the news just came out right now. So I think the news was negative. It's probably what caused this drop right here. Um, let's see, Thursday, yes, it was negative. So it was as negative as, oh no, I'm sorry, right here. Yep, it was negative. It was actually really bad. So they were anticipating it to be 67. It actually was less. It was like way farther, 62. Uh, so unemployment claims were negative and ISM services PMI was negative as well. So not good for the market. You can see that price dropped here as soon as the news was released. Um, and this is gonna be risky here too, because the thing is price reacted to the news what might happen is price might recover back up. Like it's kind of doing right there. You see the green candle price might recover back up before coming back down. So this is a, this is a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it's going to push price up possibly and create a new high where we can start looking for variations for a sell. Uh, and then it could be a bad thing if, um, if, if people start hopping into this for bikes, I could already see a lot of people trying to take a lot of people like to counter trend trade and they're, they're waiting for that that swing back up and sometimes the swing back up doesn't happen. So what I would recommend is you guys be, uh, you know, patient away for an actual entry. So yeah, Manny, version two right there. I'm not looking to take it though. I don't know if you are. Here, let me see. And I'm not looking to take it. It is a discount though. Yeah, I'm not looking for a buy there. I'm not looking to take any more buys, guys. The fundamentals are now strong for a sell. So I'm looking to take a sell. Fundamentals are currently down 167 points. Uh, retail sentiment is now, uh, it's dropping. 
So I'm looking for cells now, guys. My bias is now for a cell. Um, and you can see you know, your bias will change as the, um, as the uh, information given changes as well. Nice. So Twan's been scalping some cells. Nice work, bro. You've probably locked into pretty good profits off that. I've been looking at catching cells as well, but I haven't found anything good um, from my entries here. Um, that's weird. So Charlie says MT4 keeps logging them off. Uh, same with, with Rick. His MT4 keeps freezing. I think mine's been okay. Mine hasn't made those weird noises when it logs off or when it loses connection. I think mine's okay. I don't know if it's just like certain people. You know, the thing, Charlie, it's, it's like, I, it might be the weather too. Whenever it's like really cold and I feel like it's really cold today, the, the internet kind of goes weird here. Rest in SoCal. Uh, not sure. Yeah, Kim too. She said that I tapped on her about 10 times today. So mine has been okay, but I, generally when, when it shifts from like summer to winter, for some reason, my internet just kind of goes in and out um, in, in this area here in, in Southern California. I think it's because it's like, I know they did update the internet here in my area. So maybe that's why it's fixed. But last year, if you guys remember last year, uh, uh, from summer until fall, my internet would go in or my MT4 log in and out. It's just like the area. Um, all right, guys, no entry yet here for the one minute. We're still looking, but you can see price is now going into a range. So if this turns into a range below here, then this could be a good thing for us because if it does turn into a range, we'll have um, so this turns into the range of consolidation right here. It'll just be charging for a breakout. Uh, but dead said variation, uh, no variation because there's no high low around this area right here, guys. There is, um, well, we need the high low, like we need one of these high low points in order for us to take the uh, the variation, but there's no variation at this moment. Price continues to drop lower and lower. So price is starting to react to the news. Uh, all the news today was negative, it seems like. Yeah, unemployment claims are negative. Obviously, that affect the economy. ISM services, PMI is also negative. Um, looking over at the stock index over here. Um, I mean, you guys can kind of just tell what's the service, what's the stock that has to do with service, right? Pretty much all the ones here that are red. Uh, United Health Group, Healthcare Service, Goldman Sachs, Financial Services, Boeing, Aviational Services, IBM, Computers. Like pretty much all, the, uh, everything here is like a service, but um, you can tell the ones that are really red, like United Health, and well, not just United Health, but like a lot of the ones here. Oh, and you guys could hear that. You guys heard my MT4. So my MT4 is also logging out as well, guys. So looks like it's an issue for everybody, not just me, not just uh, certain people. That was the first time it happened today, though. Whenever you guys hear like that, that uh, I don't know what you call it. Rick would call it boom, uh, kangaroo sound, <laughs> like the bouncing sound. And the uh, the ringing noise. There you go. Looks like I lost connection. Yeah, so my MT4 is actually offline right now, guys. Um, and it's back on there. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with MT4. I don't know if it's just FTMO or if it's every other account. Um, but yeah, my my MT4 is logging in and out. All right, so below is lower down here. Yeah, Delma said, that's my cue to get off. Yeah, guys, so I'll be looking for trades here, but I'm not really going to be inclined to take anything, uh, especially something risky, because whenever that happens or, or my MT4 uh, logs on and off like that, it I don't know, because if, if you guys have been trading with me for a while, because I trade every morning, every day, whenever we have that happen, the market starts to move kind of weird. I don't know, like, if it's kind of hinting that, you know, market's about to do some weird stuff. But um, I mean, whenever you guys, uh, whenever that happens, like the market will start to just move erratically. Like you'll start to see some weird spikes in price or uh, our charts will freeze. Like the last time this happened, 
uh, TradingView was freezing. Like TradingView rarely freezes ever. And it was frozen on everybody's screen. Uh, and it was just like currency.com. It was like this broker was uh, was frozen. Um, and that never happens. So, but no, I'll be, I'll still be on here. I'll be looking for trades guys, but I'm not going to be uh, looking to take anything too risky. If I see something good, like a nice variation, yeah, I'll take it. But, um, you know, I'm still going to be a bit careful. I'm also not trying to get screwed here. All right, so there we go. This price starts to push right back up. See if it rejects off the Asia low. Uh, let's see. All right, so if this, if this higher here gets established, we might be looking for a possible variation for a sell. I also want it to be a pending sell too, Maddie. So I don't know if you're looking for that too. I want this to close with the buy signal possibly. If not, I want it to keep pushing up higher. So it didn't close with the buy signal. If it closes with an invalid buy here, even better. Possible version two of the variation right here, Maddie. You got about 20 seconds left on this. <clears throat> um, thinking about it, Maddie. It's kind of a big candle though. Yeah, I guess I'll take it. Um, let's see where it's at right now. I get another good entry point. I have to make some adjustments. I was hoping it was going to close with that invalid sell, but it didn't. Yeah, stupid spreads too wide. I'm going to have to move my, my stop loss a little wider because the spreads is freaking wide right now. Market is moving kind of weird right now, though. So I did move my stop loss a little higher because the spread is just too wide right now. Um, yeah, I'm still in it too. But the spread is, uh, yeah, the spread is kind of crazy right now. So I got, I had to move it a little wider. I know I'm increased risk on mine on this trade, but um, I did move it a little bit. Market is moving kind of weird, but let's see. Oh, we got this price drops. Yes. Oh, yeah, Maddie. <laughs> Full TP. Oh, man. I was stressing out over that because I was like, freaking spreads too freaking wide. Full TP. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go. Full TP off that. All right. I'm not doing any more stupid trades, guys. I'm done with this for right now. The market is just, it's it's weird. It's like, uh, the stupid the spread is crazy right now, guys. I don't know. Maybe that's why MT4 is like kind of going around. But yeah, the spread kind of almost pulled me out. So uh, I had to move it up a little bit. Man, that was that was quick. That only be 990 off that, but it was okay. But anyways, so as you guys can see, the market is moving kind of weird right now. So like what we said earlier, this is a uh, this is kind of a cue to maybe sit up the market. When MT4 logs in and out like that, something like this happens where the market just gets kind of weird, where it kind of just consolidates a little bit and then it has weird spikes, like random spikes in, in price. So I'm glad that I made a profit off that. Hopefully all you guys did here, um, you know, depending on your broker or whoever you're using, the spread is was really wide. So I, was, I had to move it up a little bit. I probably didn't need to move it, but um, I did just for the, you know, the safety of this position here because the spread was too wide. But anyways, uh, you know, Great move there for whoever caught it with us and whoever locked in some profit. Um, let me see what else we got over here. Yeah, no, definitely Patricia. I did. I was trusting it, but 
Uh, just the fact that the spread was wide was what was throwing me off because I could see here that it was fine within the range on trading view, but the spread was like my, it made my, um, my stop loss be like, it was here, but it was getting close to it because I was looking at my price here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the spread is about, let me see if I calculate it right now. And this is FTMO. So three, six, two, three, uh, it's like a hundred pips. I, sorry, I, I can't even do the math right now. It's moving too fast. Three, six, nine. Yeah, it's about 100 to 200 pips right now. So the spread is pretty wide. Yeah, no, exactly, Patricia. I should have I should have waited for it because we didn't have the pending sell there as well. So let me just take a screenshot of everything real quick of the profits and then we'll uh, see where it goes from here. <clears throat> Let me take a screenshot of the profits real quick and show you guys what I locked in on it. Yeah, that's weird. My uh, my Hugo's way only locked in uh, partial. Well, not really partial, but it wasn't. What the fuck? I got forty bucks on my freaking MFF. That's the, the this. Okay, so I'm definitely not going to be trading right now because it looks like the MFF spread is like really crazy. Because I literally only got forty bucks. I'll show you guys right now. That blows my mind. How did I get forty bucks, but I got like a thousand bucks on my FTMO? Yeah, 490. Yeah, this the spread is crazy and it's too volatile right now. Because all my accounts, I'll show you guys right now. The profits were like way off on everything. My main account got 990. But here, let me just show you guys. Yeah, this is probably a good time to maybe just sit out the market because it seems like there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes with like broker, uh, spread, um, execution times. I don't know. But I'll just show you guys my profits and you guys can see the big differential between all my trades here. So here's my main account. I locked in 13 bucks. This should have been like a lot more, um, which is whatever, it's fine. This is what really uh, threw me off though. My MFF only gave me 40 bucks. Like that's a huge difference from my main account. You can see the green strip here. This is my main account here. I made 990. And the thing is I got out at TP, I didn't, manually close it out. So it should have closed out around the same profit. Uh, I didn't like close it randomly. It, it had a TP set there. So it should have closed it, you know, executed around the same time. My guess is that MFF has an extremely wide spread because I only make 40 bucks off that, you, you know, comparing that to 990, it's a big difference. And the thing is it went way past TP. So it should have closed me out with like way more profit rather than less, but it closed me out with less. So, um, yeah, if you guys are using MFF, I would probably just sit out right now because this probably would have been a loss. I mean, that's crazy. If the spread is that wide where I made 990 and they only gave me 40 bucks on this, imagine if this was negative. I'd be so pissed because, so you can see right here, price, let me just, I'll, I'll show you guys again. This is why it doesn't make any sense to me because when it hit our TP, even if MFF executed late, I would have uh, about this many pips from exit point. I would have actually should have made, because this would be a thousand dollar profit, right? If I have an extra 1800 pips, I should have made at least 2000 or 3000 on my MFF if it executed late. However, I only got 40 bucks. So my guess is that uh, MFF spread is really wide because I technically only made like this much profit. So say price moved all the way down here. This is how much profit I made. And this is the spread within this area. If spread was the issue, I'm not saying that's the issue, but if it was the issue, then this is how much profit I literally locked in when I should have been locking in this entire move right here. So 
Um, you know, if you guys use MFF, just be careful. I would probably just sit out the market or check your spread right now to see what it looks like. Because, um, I mean, this just doesn't make any sense to me. And the thing is, price was down here for like two minutes. So we had a lot of time for it to like close me out before, you know, it got up to here. So something to, uh, to just keep in mind. Anyways, whatever. I made profit. Can't complain. Um, I mean, but that was a stressful trade. So <laughs> no more of those, Maddie. At least not for now. Uh, now let's see. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. It's still because the thing is, if my so I'm trying to think. Here's the thing. If my MFF entered the trade late, like entry point, I would have gotten a better entry because price pulled back into the negative. So I don't know. I, I'm thinking too much about it, but it's uh, it's definitely just too risky. There's another variation right here, uh, but you know, obviously, I didn't take the trade. That variation right there would hit full DP as well. But yeah, I'm not gonna play with it because the spread seems kind of weird or. Maybe it's just the execution times are really laggy. So, um, so let me just scroll up real quick. Spread got me. So let me go to my copier. At least didn't take a loss on the copier. Oh yeah, I see, Professor. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like a lot of people kind of got stuck in it. Um, had he only got eight. Points of it, AB said, is the spread the reason I only took 122 profit on two point? Um, I mean, you got more profit than me, bro. <laughs> you got 122, I got 40 bucks. Now I'm taking a 10 lot. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, I don't know. Spread might be the issue. It might not be. I don't, I don't really have an explanation for it. But I took a 10 lot. My profit should have been a lot more. So I'm glad that she got, uh, you got at least 122 off that. that. Um, Let's see. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, B said, for some reason, I got an MT4 error 133 trade is disabled on my MFF. What the f is that? Uh, I don't know, but you should probably message uh, FT or not if you're using MFF, message F MFF and see what the issue was with that. I didn't, um, I didn't have that. So Rav said on his MFF, he actually got full profit. So I'm not sure. Not really sure what uh looks like some people did well, some people didn't. Uh Barack said for argument's sake, how come so many of us here love MFF? Well, it seems I think that's the opposite. A lot of people here actually don't like MFF Brock. A lot of people here like FCMO. Um I, I don't even recommend MFF to anybody here. Uh, you, you know, you, I know you probably came in with MFF, but I've never recommended MFF to anybody. It's always been problems for me um, with them. You know, they're just really unorganized. Uh, their spreads suck a lot of times. Execution times kind of suck. I mean, they're, they're, they're probably the second better one uh, after FTMO, but I don't think majority of people here like MFF. Um, I mean, if you've seen the live sessions, well, you, of course you've seen the live sessions, but you've seen that every time something happens, there's always an issue with my MFF. It doesn't execute my trades or it doesn't take the proper lot size or, I mean, there's just always issues with it. So uh, yeah, Patricia said it's the slippage. MFF is tough with that. Yeah, so I guess there's a lot of slippage with MFF. I mean, it is what it is. Patricia had the same problem with her too. So both of us had issues with small profits on our MFF account. Uh, Maddie, it spreads too wide. My profits are all different across all my accounts. Yeah, I know I missed it, Charlie, but I'm not looking to take anything right now. <clears throat> so there was that variation there that a lot of people missed. Uh, it looks like a couple people caught it, but I didn't take it. Um, I'm gonna sit tight for a little bit, guys. I'm gonna let the market kind of do its thing and then um, see if the, uh, the executions will get better because I don't want to keep entering trades and then um, some of my accounts make profits, some of my accounts don't because this is just a big difference. Uh, I don't know if anyone just took a trade right now. 
See, Maddie said I might be done for the day. Um, yeah, I'll see if anyone takes any trades um, like within the next couple of minutes or so, let me know if like your trades are, are executing fine because I don't want to risk my accounts or maybe I'll just take my copier off and I'll just trade one account to see. Uh, but I don't want to be taking any trades if the market is going to be moving like this and if my trades aren't going to execute and give me proper exit points and entries. So let me just scroll down a little bit. Nice. Paul actually got into the variation. Yeah, M. I think M was in it too. Brock was in it too. <clears throat> nice. Randy took the sell variation. He locked in at 933, but his copier didn't catch it. Yeah, so it looks like a lot of people here are all are all having issues with their brokers. Um, I don't know if it's just certain brokers, but it looks like um, certain people, well, I mean, everyone here has issues with it. But yeah, nice work, Randy. Randy caught 933 off that. D said she caught 145 off the variation. Uh, Maddie said I caught it, but my profits are all different, bro. <laughs> These brokers got my, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Uh, B got one, got 590. Not sure how it did it stop me out. Dropped 1K below my stop. Yeah, that's weird. So B here, B here said that his trade is still running. He, he checked it right now. He actually locked in 590. But price kept dropping below his stop loss. Like he got negative 100, uh, 1,000, but it kept, but he still locked out with profit. Uh, I'm just reading all the messages here, guys. Um, Vapid said, could you manually close MFF for better results? Uh, it's not going to make a difference if the spread's wide, because if the spread's wide, it's still going to close you like super far out, Vapid. So I don't think manually closing is going to make a difference. Um, yeah, B said would have took the variation, but I, my account decided to disconnect from the copy here. Uh, Patricia, if you're going to take trade today uh take a variation yeah no exactly Patricia. i'm looking to take mainly just variations today if i do continue to trade guys because um the market is really choppy so with this range right here where price is really choppy it's going to be easier to catch these um you know these variations versus catching the uh the directional moves uh paul says mt5 was delayed as well Uh, Maddie said, you have to have MFF as a master to make money on it every time. Uh, that's what I do in FTMO. I have on copier usually makes more, but today was weird. Made a lot less on my FTMO. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and you can see your price is starting to swing back up. So I think at this point, guys, you should probably wait for the market to kind of stabilize somewhere and then confirm its direction. So the fundamentals here are, are not below 100 points anymore. So the, the bias is no longer, I mean, it's still a sell, but it's not a strong sell like it was earlier. The bias is now shifting back to the upside, it looks like. Or not really, because retail sentiment is at 67%. I think this might be a temporary push to the upside, and then it might just come right back down. But yeah, you guys can kind of see how wacky the market has been today um, with all of this back and forth movement. Like, there's literally no clear direction here. It's pretty much just going back and forth. Yeah, and we have news in about four minutes. Thanks, Maddie. Um, let's see if there's any other zones around this area. All right, yeah, if you guys are deciding to take any trades here, I'd be a bit careful because retail sentiment is starting to shift to the upside. So bias might be changing here on retail sentiment. However, the uh, fundamentals are still around 70 points. So it's not really a strong bias for a sell anymore. It's still a bias for a sell, but it's not very strong. Uh, going back to the charts over here, let me see if I missed anything. 
Yeah, Paul said a wacky market, but still managed to make profit. Let's go, KT fam. Definitely, Paul. Glad to see that you made some profit off that. All right, let's see what everyone else did so far over here. So, uh, Steven over here, he locked in a total of 3,564. Nice work, Steven. Um, let's see, let me scroll up a little bit. There's a lot of profits here that I missed. All right, so Tuan over here locked in a total of 2,746. Nice work, Tuan. Charlie over here having all these issues on his MT4. Uh, Tuan over here again locked in a total of 3,142. Nice work, Tuan. Uh, Vincent over here locked in a total of 1,961. Nice work, Vincent. Uh, Brock over here locked in a total of 534. Nice work, Brock. Jonathan over here locked in a total of 555. Great work, Jonathan. Uh, Steven over here, I just showed that earlier, locked in 3,564. Nice work, bro. Uh, Jeremy over here locked in a total of 490. Nice work, Jeremy. Uh, Twan again over here, 3,702. Damn, Twan's on fire, all pretty much catching all these wins. Uh, Steven over here locked in a total of 17,000 for the day. Wow, that's crazy. So you must have passed your FTMO like right now. Steven, uh, like today. So he locked in 17,000 for this. My cousin, Steven. Nice work, bro. Yeah, nice welcome back, man. You haven't been here for a while. Made your way back. I think this is like your second or third day back, K2. Um, yeah, I'm 17K in a day on FTMO. Nice work, bro. Keep it up. Um, other than that, let me go over here real quick. Angela locked in a total of 1,746. Nice work, Angela. And I'm glad to see you here. Angela said heavy work, work week for her. I haven't seen you here in a while, but it looks like you're still trading and doing really well. So you exceeded your trading goal and you're done for the day. So great work, Angela, 1,700 there. Uh, Dell locked in a total of 1,059. Great work, Dell. Uh, Dell again right here is other account or the same account with more profit, locked in 1,290. Great work, Dell. Scrolling down a little further. Uh, Al over here, Al said, finally getting this style of trading. Thanks, Sean, for your expertise. Uh, Al locked in a total of 4,147. Really nice work right there, Dell. I mean, uh, Al. So Al, I know Al's been in and out of K2 for a while too. Al finally got this stuff down. He's killing it in one day, 4,147. So great work right there, Al. Really proud that you're starting to get this together. Um, Charlie over here too, locked in 458. Nice work, Charlie. Uh, Maddie over here said, might be done for the day. Spreads are killing me. So Maddie over here locked in a total of 1,000. Uh, 22 off his MFF, his uh, FTMO over here locked in 759, his other FTMO locked in 409. Wow, these are like, the, the profits are so different, Maddie. And then his other one right here locked in a total of 1,798. So great profits across the board right here, Maddie. But no, I do, I do understand it's, it's, it's annoying, bro, with... Uh, with uh your profits being all over the place going back to the charts over here let me just check if there's anything uh nothing available right now i'll just keep updating this as price continues to move along uh what else do we have over here we have patrick over here with a total of 1630 <clears throat> nice work patrick um patrick's other count 2829 so as you guys can see a lot of people here locked in a lot of profits off that same sell we took earlier uh, profits kind of varied with everybody, uh, but yeah, like Patrick said, you know, it's uh, market's a little funky, which yeah makes sense. Uh, Patricia over here too, locked in a total of three thousand seven hundred five. Great work, Patricia. Yeah, really nice wins right there. And then her other account, she locked in two thousand four hundred forty. So a lot of wins off that those cells that just came up. There's two cells that came up right here. Uh, that was pretty solid. Uh, Sisu go over here, locked in a total of 2,584. Nice work, Sisu. So, yeah, it looks like a lot of people are having issues with their uh, with their stuff, but everyone's doing really good. Um, CT over here, locked in a total of nice about 11,000 for the day, or 12,000 actually for the day. Pretty much locked in for the week. I know, C I know you've been um, you've been sick, CT. Hopefully, you and your family are good. You know, with COVID and all that. So definitely uh, doing good right there, guys. So great work amongst everyone here. Josh just sent me his profits too over here. Um, so yeah, Josh over here just sent me his profits, locked in the total of 813. Nice work, Josh. Joshua, actually, sorry. Uh, Ideal over here. So Ideal said uh, first week with FTMO, 
Lock in a total of 608 in profit. Nice work to do. I know you just started your, I think this is your 10K or 25K account with FTMO. So as long as you stay consistent with your profits here, uh, you should be able to, I mean, you should pass your FTMO within this week, if not next week. So great work, Adil. First week with FTMO, doing great. Um, Maddie over here. So Maddie said 25K for the week, even though the market was shitty today. <laughs> so yeah, the, the market was kind of whack, but you know, um, Maddie is still up. Uh, 25k for the week so definitely definitely great work right here maddie so all of his profits right here he's up 25k for the week so far uh it's only been what four days into the week so i mean bro you're on your way to make the 100k this month i mean you know it's the goal so you're already at 25k you can probably push it a little more maybe a couple more today a couple more tomorrow and then you'll have like an upper hand because you know we got about four weeks in january so Hopefully you get to that 100K at the end of the month. I mean, those, it's gold right there. So, man, Maddie's killing it. Um, yeah, Patricia over here. Definitely 3,700 over here. Or actually, yeah. So, Patricia, the playtime morning, she locked in a total of 3,705 this morning. So, great work right there, Patricia. Her other account, 3,705. I think it's the same thing. So, yeah, she was done for the day right there. And then her other account here, 2,440. Great work, Patricia, all around. Uh, Ed over here. Dang it, I haven't heard from you like since August, bro. <laughs> so, Ed, good to see that you're locking some profits here. Uh, I know you're traveling here to the US, or not to the US, but to California from the East Coast. So, I know you've been busy, but definitely glad to see you here. You locked in these are your profits from Asia and US so far for the day. Total of 2,283 for the day. Nice work, Ed. Keep it up. Um, possible entry or no? No entry right there, actually. Just a high. I'm just going to keep drawing these. Uh, these high lows as price starts to get tighter and tighter. Let me go over here real quick and I'll just draw a couple more. So we got one right there. One right there. One right there. I'll turn this off. All right, so as you guys can see, price is, go is consolidating within this area right here, which is a good thing. We want it to consolidate so that we can catch the breakout in either direction. However, looking at fundamentals over here, let's see, retail sentiment's currently 67% short. So um, still, like, there's still a good amount of retail traders on the sell side. Um, looking at fundamentals over here, it's currently 70 points in the red. So looks like bias is still going to be kind of indecisive at this moment. But we'll see what happens, you know, in the next couple of minutes or so. Anyways, back to the chart, back to uh, Telegram over here. Uh, CERN over here. Uh, I think uh, it's weird today, probably Biden speaking and the news that came out. So, sir, I'm not sure if you're having a live session, but I don't think the market's moving weird because of NFP, because the market usually doesn't move like this, or not just the market, but MT4 doesn't usually move weird during NFP week. So I don't think it's because of NFP. I think it's there's just other reasons for it, specifically probably because Biden spoke earlier plus the negative news, and then, I don't know, just connectivity issues with brokers. So I don't think it's because of the, uh, the uh, nice Dennis. Dennis over here too. Dennis, I think you just passed your FTMO, so you're getting on your way to getting funded. You locked in a total of 2,602. I'm not sure if this is a new account, but uh, I know you just got funded on your last one yesterday. So great work right there, Dennis. <clears throat> yeah, Tuan over here currently at 3,702. That's where Tuan. Charles over here. Sorry, guys, I got a cough. Uh, Charles over here locked in a total of 307 off this account. So nice work right there, Charles. And then I don't know how he lost it on the other one, but his copier lost on MFF. So it looks like you had the same issue as me, Charles. Um, your uh, your account, all right, yeah, that's weird, yeah, because you have two MFFs. So you have your main MFF and then your copier still lost. I don't know, it's weird, um, but yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, how the market's moving right now. So Gian over here as well, locked in a total of 1,307. Nice work, bro. Uh, Casey over here too. Casey said, when you when you said, I'm making a stop loss wire, I was like, 
I'm like, hell no, but good play, bro. <laughs> so uh, Casey over here at locked in a total of 388 for this account. Nice work, Casey. And then his other account, he locked in 795. So as you guys can see for Casey's copy here too, looks like he's having the same issue where, um, where he's having different, oh no, actually, never mind. I take that back. He used different lot size. So that's why your profit was different. But um, yeah, no, great profit right there, Casey. One account about 800, the other account about 400. So like well over a thousand for the day. Um, Scotty over here too, profit of 396. So great work guys amongst everyone else. I think that's it for the profits right now. If you guys have more profits to send in, just go ahead and send them in. Otherwise we'll start looking for some possible entries here, but I don't think we're gonna have anything um, anytime soon. I mean, we'll keep drawing the, uh, cause you guys can see here that the, um, The consolidation zones are getting tighter and tighter. Let's see, it looks like Patricia sent me some more profits. Let me see what you did right now, Patricia. All right, so the range is getting tighter and tighter. You can see the wide range right here. This is the high, this is the low, this is the medium range, this is a smaller range, and this is the very tight range right here. So price is pretty much squeezing within this area. When price squeezes within this area, price will do one of two things. It'll either break out to the upside or it'll break out to the downside. It's getting close to eight. So what might happen is I'm probably anticipating one breakout and then price will go into consolidation. So um, you guys wanna be a bit careful with these right here. Anyways, let me see what Patricia just sent me. More profits, nice. So yeah, Patricia actually took another variation locking a total of 3,080, wow. Nice work right there, Patricia. She caught that swing back to the upside. Nice. So Dennis just passed his, uh, his, uh, oh, okay. It looks like you're doing like the, the trout uh, demo of it. But that's good. I mean, still, you're good here, Dennis. So you can see that you're passing this here so that when you do uh, another, you know, another challenge, you're, you're solid. You're going to be right, right away to, uh, to, to pass it right away with no issues. So great work, guys. Great work amongst everyone here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't see anything right now, but price is kind of just going sideways at this moment. Um, 740 right now. Let me see if there's anything else going on in the news. I don't think there's anything really going on. So as you can see, the indices here are kind of, uh, the indices are kind of all over the place. Uh, the Dow is currently down 75 points, s and is up five points, NASDAQ's currently recovering up 10 points, but overall it just doesn't look like uh, there's any clear direction with regard to, um, with regard to, um, you know, um, clear direction for S&P and, and the Dow, because usually they go in the same direction. And NASDAQ just turned red, so it looks like a lot of these are coming right back down. Um, and we'll see where it goes from here. Anyways, let me scroll up real quick and see what else I'm missing. There's like a lot of messages that came in as uh, I was going over the telegram. Uh, let me scroll this real quick. Oh, Vince, I just saw your message. So I saw you, you confirmed that too. So let me see over here real quick. Uh, yeah, and it looks like John and Paul are both looking for a COVID test. I know everything is like pretty much packed. I couldn't find one before either. I, my, my cold kind of went away, so I think I'm fine now. Um, let's see, Vince says, hey, Sean, can you explain if the sell at 730 would have been a good or bad trade to take? So see Vince took a sell right here at 7.30. Um, so I'm trying to figure out which, which strategy did you use Vince? I think you might've just used the pivot scalp. Uh, so in that case, I would consider it a bad trade because I'm looking for like the only good trades that I'm looking for are variations or the triple confluence is right here. I'm not looking for anything that's just one strategy on its own. Um, the main reason why I thought, well, why I would have thought that this would have been a bad trade was because the, um, 
I don't know if you were looking at the fundamentals, but we were looking at the fundamentals around this period and the fundamentals weren't below 100 points anymore. So it was actually pushed up. It was like at 70 points. So with that said, it was like around this point right here, 70. So with it being around 70, um, you know, the bias isn't that strong anymore. So I wouldn't be looking for any sells. Generally, if I'm looking for sells, especially for like just single entries like that, I want the bias to be very strong. So for one, the retail sentiment over here isn't necessarily telling you that, uh, you know, retail traders are, are long. It's just like kind of bouncing around this area right here. So for one, I would think it would be a bad trade because the fundamentals weren't necessarily negative or it wasn't below 100 and consistently below there. Uh, the reason why I know that is because it was below 100 and it was down here. So price pushed up to this point over here. It was definitely not uh, below 100 when it got to that point. So one red flag here is the fact that, um, I mean, the main thing that I would, we, the reason why I wouldn't have taken this myself was the fact that there was no triple confluence. If there's a triple confluence, maybe I would have thought about it. But for one, there was no triple confluence. There's just one entry there. Um, the, the second thing was the fact that the fundamentals weren't like consistently below 100. I know it's kind of hard to keep track of it, but um, the way that I keep track of it is basically if it's below 100, I'll look here and if it's below 100 down here, if price goes above here, anywhere above this price point, it's probably gonna be less than 100. So I probably wouldn't be looking to take anything. So one red flag is that it was just a single entry. Uh, second red flag was the fact that the fundamentals here weren't very strong. And the third red flag would be the fact that uh, retail sentiment is still short. I know we're looking for some shorts here, <clears throat> but that was only because the fundamentals were down 100 points. Um, if this is not down 100 points, I wouldn't look for any sells. Like for right now specifically, <clears throat> and I got this lingering cough, which is super annoying. It's just in the morning. So, um, so in order for me to take some sells, like for example, right now, I wouldn't be looking for any sells because the fundamentals aren't below 100 points. If it does go below 100 points and this is um, still short, then I would probably look for some possible entries, but not necessarily anything. Uh, not necessarily anything um, risky. So I would just consider that risky. So all in all, I would consider that not necessarily a horrible trade, but it would be a bad trade in my in my uh, analysis. Yeah, no problem, Vince. I know, unfortunately, you got caught in that move there. Um, sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but in a lot of instances, you know, you got to be really careful around these periods because there's no strong, clear direction that's been set. Generally, what you would want to take the sells there, you'd want this to be long. So instead of it being 67% short, you want this to be 67% long. And then you want this to be down. Um, 100 points so currently at the moment guys i'm not looking for any trades uh reason for that's because price is kind of just going back and forth there's no clear direction price might come right back down price might continue pushing up there just isn't anything really indicating that price is going to um you know continue pushing in one direction or the other so I'll just be careful. It's 746 right now. So it's getting close to eight. Um, it's getting close to the time where I stopped trading anyways. What might happen at this point, guys, is price might go into some consolidation, which is fine. So price came down, came up. Price might consolidate a bit. Possibly push up a little higher. Consolidate a bit. And then around the mid-mark reversal, possibly drop right back down. Might even come up to opening price. Like what Maddie was saying earlier. Price might come up over here to opening price and then um, it might make its way back down. So this is what might happen here. Price might keep pushing up a bit higher and then consolidate, push up higher, consolidate, and then drop once we get close to uh, to the mid-mark reversal. Oh, nice, Kenny. Yeah, Kenny said we got some snow this morning. It's still snowing. Wow. So, yeah, it's cold here in California. It's not, well, I mean, obviously it doesn't snow here, but it's cold. It's just chilly. It's not raining, just, just cold. So see that right there. 
<laughs> Dylan said we need a double wick rejection indicator. Yeah, no, it'll get created eventually. Um, you know, the main reason why I don't create indicators right away is that I want you guys to actually think and to actually understand what we're doing, right? Because the thing is, a lot of these indicators you can do on your own. It's just the indicator makes things a lot more efficient. But I want you guys to actually know how to trade and not just depend on the indicators 100%. I know the indicators make a huge difference with uh, making right or wrong choices with identifying, you know, certain points. But, um, you know, I actually do want you guys to learn because this is a skill that you guys can learn and, you know, you can continue to teach people and pass on to people you want to teach, uh, like family and stuff like that. Because the thing here is like these indicators make things a lot easier, but in reality, it's not just indicators, right? Like just from being on these live sessions, there's other things that we look at. We don't just look at the requirements. We look at retail sentiment. We look at fundamentals. We look at news. We look at uh, technicals. We look at the indicators we look at price. We look at a lot of things. So, um, yeah, no, eventually we'll make that a deal, but I want everyone here to be on point with actually knowing how to trade and understanding how to analyze the market. Cause there, there's a lot more that, that than, than just, um, following a strategy. Although these strategies do work on their own. Um, in a lot of instances, just like what will happen with Vincent here or Vince, sorry, Vince, uh, what happened with Vince here, he, uh, took the sell because, you know, the, the strategy here provided for a sell. However, if he tied in other factors, you know, the fundamentals, retail sentiment, stuff like that, uh, it would have prevented him from entering uh, the trade, which is okay, right? It's okay to make mistakes, guys, but um, the key thing is that you guys are learning from the mistakes and you guys don't make the mistakes again in the future. So um, other than that, it's 750 right now, guys. So I think this might be it for the session. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Just a reminder, we're having the group mentoring session today at two o'clock. So I'm going to step off for a couple hours. I'll be back um, shortly before 2 p.m. Pacific time. So it's about to be 8 right now, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. About six hours from now, I'll be back live for the group mentoring session. So if you guys have any questions uh, or any specific questions, I would probably just hold it for the group mentoring session because we'll have that whole time period for me to just answer questions for you guys. Um, and during that session, I can just... Uh, break it down for you, give you guys examples and make sure that you guys actually really understand this stuff here. Cause you know, there's a lot of things that come into play and uh, the more that you guys understand it, the, the better you guys will be off when applying these strategies on your own. So yeah, Brock, six hours from now. So just make sure to set an alarm, Brock. I'm not sure where you're located, but I, I know uh, it, it's six hours away. So if you just set an alarm, maybe five hours from now to be awake or be a, be um be aware you'll uh, you'll have you'll be there okay perfect you're on gmt yeah so you're you're a little off but you, you know just five or six hours from here um ab's asking will the mentoring session be uploaded to the youtube when it's finished yeah it'll be streamed on the youtube and it'll also be uh saved on there too so if you guys miss it uh you guys are fine you know if you guys are if you guys miss it you guys can rewatch the mentoring session later <clears throat> you know just keep in mind that the um that the uh, the set the the group mentoring session is going to be really key for you guys to really understand and get all your questions asked. So if you guys do attend it, it'll be good for you and for everyone because I know some people are scared to ask questions and some people are just shy. I'm sure there's like a handful of other people that have the same exact question as you. So if you guys are scared to ask a question, someone else will ask it for you. So um, I think that's it for now. Yeah, Paul said, GG's KT fam. Nice props for the day. It's closed out tomorrow. The week's strong uh, with at least no losses. No, definitely. That's exactly what I'm looking for, Paul. So, um, yeah, other than that, guys, I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I'll be back in a couple hours for the group entering session. Uh, it will be streamed on YouTube, and it will also be uh, saved on there when we're done. So my recommendation is if you guys do decide to trade, for the rest of the morning, I would recommend just, you know, for the most part, don't trade. But if you guys want to trade, use a smaller lot size or just trade on a demo to play around with it. But I think the market's too risky right now. I'm not going to be trading at all. I'm going to take a break, get all my stuff in line for the group mentoring session. And then from there, we will, uh, we will uh, go along with that. <laughs> I know Maddie, Maddie's looking for a variation here, but Okay, so we'll wait for this right here. Let's wait for this one trade here. If there's a variation that comes up, maybe. 
If not, then we'll log off for the day. <clears throat> so you got about 15 seconds left on this. Man, I don't know what's going on with my cough. I was like good all earlier in the session. All of a sudden, my cough just came. And it's just too cold in my office. Uh, we got about three seconds on this, Maddie. It doesn't look like there's going to be a variation there. No variation. All right, guys. So that's it. I'll see you guys in a couple hours. And then we'll see you guys uh, during the group mentoring session. So have a great rest of your morning, guys. And we will see you guys then. So see you.